Okay, I'm going to do problem number four at the whiteboard. Let me get there. And it's problem number four. So let me get the whiteboard. I'll write down what I have. This is number four. I have a polynomial, which is 27. X to the third power plus 54X squared uh, minus 141X and plus 28. And that's, uh, that's 28 equals zero. They tell me uh, a root to the problem is four-thirds. And that means a factor is x minus uh, 4 thirds. I prefer to write this a little differently as 3x minus 4. All right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a long division. Get my eraser out. So again, I know the factor is 3x minus 4. I want to find out what the other factor is, which is going to be quadratic. So 3x minus 4 divides into... Let's see, 27x cubed, that's a cube, plus 54x squared, minus 141x plus 28. I'm going to get my eraser out here. <coughs> let's see what we got here. I'm going to say we need a matching game, right? So it's going to be, uh, let's see, uh, 9x squared, and that's going to give me 27x cubed. And then minus 36x squared. Subtract, what do you get? 90x squared minus 141x plus 28. Let's see, plus 30x. That's going to give me 90x squared minus 120x. We're going to subtract. You get minus 21x plus 28. And then what's that going to be? It looks like minus 7. And what do you get there? Minus 21x plus 28, as expected, remainder 0. So now I know the factors. And the factors are as follows. 3x minus 4 times 9x squared plus 30x minus 7 equals 0. So the deal about this is, we know one linear factor and one quadratic factor. The problem now <coughs> got easier because certainly the quadratic factors are easier than cubic factors, and I got a factor that quadratic. But looking at it, I just don't think I'm going to get it um, using finger numbers. So I have to resort to the quadratic formula. And I want to get this, whoops, sorry about that. I want to get the zero on this guy right over here. All right, so let's write this down. So it's 9x squared plus 30x minus 7 equals 0. Quadratic formula, fairly easy. What's well, going to be 18 in the bottom? That's twice the a. Then you're going to get what? Let's be very careful about this. Minus 30 plus or minus the b squared, which is 30 squared, minus 4 times a times c, which is minus 7. So I'll just simply say plus 7. Minus or minus, that is. All right, it's got some work over here. So 30 squared is going to be, let's see, 900. And 4 times 9 is 36. 36 times 7, that's 210. And 42, 252. That's 2, 5, 11, 52. Let's write that down. These are kind of hard numbers to deal with. So my recommendation is um, to look for a perfect square at 1152 to make it easier for me. So 1, 1. Whoops, that's not a good thing. Certainly 2 goes into it. I'm just going to factor it. That's 550, 576. All right, keep going. I got a 2. And that goes in, let's see, 250, 35, 285, 288. 2 again. 144. And that'd be 12 times 12, right? So the root of 1152 
is the same thing as 12 squared times 2 squared times 2, which is going to be 24 root 2. Let me write that down for you. Just give me one second here. And this is over 18. Now what I'm going to do is just get the number so I can, I can manage a little bit better is divide through by 6. And you can get minus 5, plus or minus, let's see, 6, right? So 4 root 2 over 3. All right? Let me get my eraser out. Although they're not asking you to do it, I, I want to factor that polynomial using that number. And I know, I know it's difficult, all right? But um, I'm going to write it down for you. So the, the two roots now are going to be minus 5 plus 4 root 2 over 3. And the other root is going to be minus 5 minus 4 root 2 over 3. I'm going to do something that some people say is very strange. I'm going to factor out a minus sign. And this would be 5 minus 4 root 2 over 3. And this would be minus 5 plus 4 root 2 over 3. All right? So what we're going to do, these are the roots. So I know the three roots now. And these are the three roots of the problem. Now what I mean by that, this is a root. This is a root. And what's the other root? Well, the other root that was given to me was x equals uh, 4 thirds. All right? So I got, I got the three roots. And that's what they wanted. We got the three roots. Of course, my objective here is to factor the problem. All right? So I'm going to write this over here. And there's a point to it. And the point is, I'm going to write this down now. So it's going to be, oops, sorry about that. Let me make sure I got my pen before this goes wacky on me. All right, so if these are the roots, the factors would be x minus the number, so minus or minus is plus, right? Plus 5 minus 4 root 2 over 3. And what's the other thing going to be? It's going to be x minus that number, which is plus 5 plus 4 root 2 over 3. All right? Now, before you, you say what that is, I want to point out, that I have to look back at the original problem. And the original problem is this over here. And let me write this down. So it's going to, I'm saying 3x minus 4. And then I write these two other factors down. But I want to point out, it really couldn't be this, could it? And why is that? If you just multiply 3 by the x's, you just get 3x to the third power. And I want 27. So I'm going to rewrite these a little bit differently. I'm going to write it as 3x plus 5 minus 4 root 2. I write this one as x plus 5 plus 4 root 2. I'm sorry, 3x. Would I get to 27 in that case? I sure would. All right, so what do you get over here? It's going to be 3x plus, let's go back again, 5 minus 4 root 2. And 3x plus 5 plus 4 root 2. All right? Now, granted, that was not their question, no. Uh, their question was, what are the roots? We found the roots. They're outlined in red. May I did not outline this one in red. Let me do that now. They're the roots. I want to graph it, though. All right? Now, I granted, I, someone says those numbers are awful. How could I possibly graph that? Um, well, I'm not going to get the exact value of those numbers, but I, I think I can get an approximate value. All right, just give me one second. And again, my scale, not all that important to me, but I got to get things relatively right. It's got a y-intercept of 28. So let me put that down over here. All right. So that, that, that's a given. That, that was kind of easy to get. And, now, and then I'm going to get the, um, that, that four-thirds. And four-thirds, I'm going to say, if this is one here, by the way, it's not the same scale on the x and y, four-thirds would be about here, right? Let me, let, let me outline that point for you. And that point there is going to be 
four thirds, comma zero. All right. Now someone says, I wonder where the other ones are. And I, I, I want to claim to you that you know, kind of looking at it, I hope you agree that this is the most negative thing it could be. Right. I'm not saying it's an easy number, by the way, but it's not a bad number. I mean, you could you could certainly approximate that. And before I do that, I want to just kind of think about it. And the top numbers, you know, five plus, you know, four times the root of two. So I'm going to say it's roughly around, you know, that top number, around nine point something. All right. So I get a rough idea that this number here is, you know, three point something. And it's going to be minus three point something. Now, granted, I really can't measure it better than that unless I want to do some numerical techniques or use a calculator. I'm just going to plot the point, right? I know it's negative, and I know it's, like, way over here somewhere. I'll get my black pen out first. What's this point over here? Let me be careful. It's going to be minus 5 plus 4 root 2. You know what? I gotta get my eraser out. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a better graph. And let me just kind of pull this up here and get a better graphing system done. And let me plot the two points I felt comfortable with that. And I'll put them down again for you. Put this point over here. Let's get it in red, though. And uh, that point was what? Four thirds, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, this point over here is four thirds, comma zero. There's a point over here. I'll put it here. And that point was going to be uh, minus five plus four root two over three, comma zero. And I gotta do this guy now. And again, it's 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 not the easiest thing in the world to do, but I guess I have to do that, right? And what number are you gonna get there? That's a pretty small number, isn't it? I gotta think about that. Let me just take a moment to think now. Let's see, four root two. That's gonna be a positive number. It's gonna be fractional in nature. And I'm gonna say maybe, I don't know, maybe somewhere around here. All right, and again, I'm just ballparking it. And what's this point over here? Let's write this down. This is going to be, I'm going to write it down as minus 5 minus 4 root 2. You're more than welcome to use a calculator, by the way. And then there's another point, and I'm not going to use the same scale, by the way. I'll say there's a y-intercept over here of 0, 28. Where's that coming from? The original problem's got a y-intercept. Just looking at it, set x to be 0, you get 28. Now, of course, I'm going to say, you know, kind of connecting it together... You could certainly take test points. And if you did that, you would take test points in the factored form over here. And I hope you realize my test points would occur in intervals. Like, for example, I, I, again, I want to point out what I mean by that. A test point over here, like you could pick any number on that side, like 10, for example, and plug it in. And what would happen over there? Everything would be positive. All right? Again, I, I'm not actually doing any arithmetic. I'm just talking about signs of it now. Let's do this in blue. There's something like this over here. Now I'm gonna take the number one and plug it in now. And that's, the number one is between those two roots now. Let me point out what I mean. The number one's between these two roots over here. And let's plug it in. And we're gonna plug it into the factored form. Let me point out what the factored form is again. Uh, this over here is the factored form. And if you plug in one there, Again, I know it's difficult, but um, let's see what you get. 
negative on the first term. 3 plus 5 is 8. Positive, positive. So you get negative overall. So I'm going to kind of connect that in here. Now what I notice about between the other ones, it's got to be positive. It's already a test point over there. Now I'm not sure exactly what it looks like, but I'm going to say maybe something like this over here. Right? I'm not saying it exactly it looks like that. It's just a rough picture. Now, if you went below like that number there, like what's a good number there? Like minus 10 and plugged it in. And I hope you start to realize you get negative times a negative times a negative, which would be negative overall. All right, there's my rough picture. All right, what I want to do is I want to make sure that when you're looking at the key, that you're looking at the answers that we've indicated to you. Let me just check that now. I want to see if I put those numbers down for you. Minus 5, plus or minus 4, root 2 over 3, or 4 thirds. I wonder if I got a picture for that one. It says page, uh, I'm sorry, figure 260. I'm going to look at that now. Yep, we have a very similar picture, by the way. The picture of the machine does a lot better, by the way, but it, it's not bad. Again, thank you for paying attention.